Let's move on and talk about second pre-analytical error in our list, partial span sample. Partial span sample can be due to short centrifugation time, wrong centrifugation speed, imbalance samples load during centrifugation, or centrifuge mechanical error. The impact of this error can cause wrong results, wrong hemolysis index, microclot, re-spinning effect, increase total turned around time. Note, this error can go undetectable if fully automated system used. So partial span sample error resulted mainly from poor quality of centrifugation. In saying that, you may ask, what are the right conditions to obtain a good quality of centrifugation? Quality of centrifugation depends on several factors. These are the right speed, plus the right centrifugation time, plus balance during centrifugation. Let's talk about the right speed. There are so many types of centrifuges, different sizes, different motor angles, and different buckets. This variation means not all 3000 RPM are the same at all centrifuges. That's why we don't depend on RPM in scientific language. For example, the way we communicate to separate serum or plasma from red cells usually require about 10 minutes at 2000 G, or to obtain poor platelets plasma less than 10,000 platelets per microliter, it requires 10 minutes at 3000 G. Centrifuge speed calculated based on two factors. Number one, the relative centrifugal force times gravity and number two is the radius of the centrifuge in centimeter. Where to obtain the relative centrifugal force? It's from your standard operation procedure or contact your lab. And where to get your, the radius of your centrifuge? Basically, just, follow, uh, just go to your centrifuge instruction manual, look under specification, or you can measure it yourself. To measure it yourself, if you are using swinging tube or bucket, lift it up in a horizontal position and measure the distance from the center of the router to the bottom end of the bucket or tube. If your centrifuge is fixed angle router, again, measure the distance from the center of the router to the approximate bottom of the tube. Remember, measurement unit in centimeter. After we obtain the RCF and radius, now time to calculate the RPM. There are three ways to calculate the RPM. Number one, using formula. Number two, chart, nomograph, and number three is the speed calculator. This is a useful website I would recommend you to have a look at, not only for the formula or the speed calculator, but actually it covers almost all aspects related to centrifuge. I'll put the link below this video. This is a nomograph chart. All you need is to plot your numbers and make sure to put your ruler at the right radius and selected RCF and then see what is the RPM for your centrifuge. As you can see as well, the smaller the radius is, the higher the RPM required to get same RCF. I'll put the link for this chart if you'd like to print out and have it also below this video. This is the easiest way to calculate RPM using a speed calculator. Again, all you need just to plot your number and calculate speed. It will be a good exercise to plot the radius of your centrifuge and the RPM you're actually using now to calculate the RCF. If you get RCF less than 2000 G, please contact your lab because we don't use less than 2000 G for a general pathology testing. Also, it is worth mentioning there is a variation between nomograph and centrifuge speed calculator. Centrifuge speed calculator is more accurate and I would recommend it myself. Second parameter in quality of centrifugation is time. For time, just follow your standard operation procedure. If it says 10 minutes, no more, no less. Put it on, for example, for 9 minutes. This will affect the quality of the results. You may see clear serum, but you don't see the silica or fibrin or platelets or microclot. Third parameter is balance during centrifugation. 
Balance load during centrifugation is very important because the improper distribution of the tube in carriers or adapters can cause poor separation, the buckets won't pivot to the required horizontal position during the run, resulting in poor density separation, remixing the sediments during deceleration, imbalance load can damage the drive shift and shorten centrifuge's life. By the way, same principle apply to your washing machine. If it stand on uneven floor, this will damage the drive shift, make it more noisy and shaking during spinning. Unbalanced centrifuge can be due to unbalanced weight distribution during centrifugation, leaking tube due to many usages, fluid loss from motor to the chamber, the cap of the tube is not sealed leading to fluid loss from motor to the chamber, overfilled tubes. To balance a centrifuge, weight of opposing tube must be distributed equally. Second, to balance the router load, full all opposing tube to the same level with liquid of the same density. Third, place tubes in the router symmetrically. Fourth, centrifuge should be on a flat even bench. As a recommendation, check your balanced tube regularly and replace them with certain number of spinning. Tubes have certain limit for how many times can be spun. If you know how many times, please let us know at the comment section below, because honestly I don't know myself. Don't skip your daily, weekly and monthly maintenance. Clean it immediately after any splash or broken tube and keep it clean at all time as it can be a source of contamination. Report any issue you notice to your lab. Signs of imbalance centrifuge, it can be shake, move or noise during centrifugation. Vibration at the beginning or ending of the spinning is normal. Vibration occurs as the router passes through a so-called critical speed range where any small vibration are temporarily amplified. It won't affect separation because the centrifugal force is still high enough to stabilize them. However, a good balanced centrifuge will minimize vibration. Now, how do you know if you have this problem of partially spun sample? Just follow this chart. Do you have many samples look like hemolyzed after centrifugation? If no, your separation is good, no action needed. If yes, put your samples in a rack and let them stand for 30 minutes. And then look, if you find cells started to settle down and gradient color formed, that means centrifuge problem present, contact your lab and report the problem. If no change and serum looks homogeneous red color, Samples are hemolyzed, no action needed in terms of centrifugation, however, causes of hemolysis need to be addressed and resolved. Best centrifugation practice. After collecting blood, mix gently by inverting the tube at 180 degrees 7 to 10 times. Leave it in a stand position in a rack for 30 minutes to clot, away from sun, heater or air conditioned air path. Note, if patient on blood anticoagulant or blood thinners therapy, leave it for 45 to 60 minutes. Centrifugation time for 10 to 15 minutes based on your standard operation procedure. Centrifugation speed, as we explained, depend on the relative centrifugal force and the radius of your centrifuge. After centrifugation, check centrifugation quality visually. Keep tubes in upright position at all time. If you noticed imbalance or noise during centrifugation, please report it to your seniors so they can investigate. Thanks for watching. We love hearing from you and love you like our videos and share it with your colleagues to maximize the benefit of our work. Meantime, wish you a happy working days. Bye bye for now.